Hi everybody and welcome back to uh, WYSIWYG Training with James Simpson. Uh, this is now chapter three. Uh, for those of you who have uh, been following the, uh, the tutorial so far, you'll notice that the videos are going to change slightly now. We're going to jump up to release 44. I've uh, got back on top of making videos for uh, the current release. So we're a year further along than we were when we first made them. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to start to look at how we can draw objects in WYSIWYG. We're going to actually work for an entire production. So we're going to go from the very beginning of the production from, from scratch, from absolutely nothing, and build an entire production all the way to uh, a finished uh, visualization that we can connect a lighting desk up to and, and control the lights. So we're going to do the entire pipeline of a WYSIWYG uh, project. And we're going to be using Jesus Christ Superstar. This is a production that I have access to, that I'm allowed to show. I have a large repertoire of productions that I could show, but I'm not allowed to because they either belong to the Royal Opera House or one of the West End producers. Uh, and I don't really want to start getting in trouble with them uh, because they're also my clients. So uh, we're going to use a production that was actually made from an amateur dramatics group in 2011. Um, and it's a very big set. It's a very big lighting rig for an amateur dramatics group. Don't, uh, don't assume that means it's going to be a, a small fry thing. Uh, I believe in amateur dramatics quite strongly as a, as a grassroots um, developer of new audiences and new talent. I came from amateur dramatics. I did a survey once. I commissioned the entire industry to tell me where they started, and they all started from amateur dramatics as well. At least 70% of the industry started in amateur dramatics. So let's give them some praise. And this is a great project to use as a, as a test. And I can probably share some files with you as well. So I have some CAD plans, some 3D models, and, and, the, and we actually did this project in ESP Vision as it was then, but I'm going to recreate it for you in WYSIWYG. So we're not going to see the the thing that I made before, I can show you how we're going to make it now in the new software, WYSIWYG. Um, I've also thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about computer specs, because some of you might be asking at this point whether or not your uh, equipment at home is up to spec for this. So, so far we've been looking at the mainly the, the CAD tools and very simple the spreadsheet tools. So if you're working at the report level, uh, quite a simple laptop like a Surface Book or, or you know, I don't do Apple Macs, but a very basic level Mac would uh, would be more than sufficient for that. As we get into the more advanced work we're doing now, you're going to start to need a graphics card that's got some got some power to it. So usually it's a separate GPU, a separate graphics card that plugs into the PC, uh, or a laptop that has a separate graphics card in it. You don't want to be using the integrated Intel um, HD uh, graphics cards that plug straight into the, the motherboard. You want to have a dedicated graphics card. Uh, ideally, you want to be using um, something around an NVIDIA GTX sort of 690 uh, up from there. You want something that's designed to run a game that's maybe five or six years old. I have a GTX 2070 in the PC that I'm using, um, and that's almost fairly recent, about a year old now, um, and it's, it's perfectly fine for all of the tasks I could do in WYSIWYG. Your CPU and your GPU, they're important, but they're not, not crucial. You want to have a CPU that's fast enough to be able to process your data packets from ArtNet or streaming ACN. So if you've got a really large lighting rig with uh, with lots and lots of lights and lots of data coming in, that's what your CPU is really needed for. So there you want to have a decent Intel or AMD uh, processor. Your video, uh, so your uh, RAM memory, 16 gigabytes is plenty. Uh, eight gigabytes is fine if you've only got that much. They've now released the 64-bit version of WYSIWYG, which means that you can take a lot more RAM. So before uh, the last release, we were looking at only being able to run 16 gigabytes of RAM at any point. So it didn't matter how much RAM was in the PC, WYSIWYG would only draw about four gigabytes of this or something. It was only able to access that much through the architecture that it was using. Now it's 64-bit, it will use all the RAM you put into it. So, you know, go crazy. But it's actually not as important as video RAM. Uh, the video RAM is how much graphics it can store in the graphics card at any one time, so it can refresh it really quickly. So uh, I have 16 gigabytes in my in my 2070, I think. Correct me on that if I got that wrong. Um, which is again plenty for this, this sort of project we're doing now. The times when I need anything bigger than that is when I'm doing an arena and there's you know two and a half thousand lights all rendering at the same time, or we have a, a production that's got a really complicated. Uh, set and we're trying to do very fast uh, moving light sequences with lots of flashing and we need that to run uh, as fast as possible so there's no latency in the in the image uh, but we've got a really dense 3d model in there which is absorbing polygons and taking up a lot of the me memory so 
really, you scale your computer based on the project you've got. If you're doing training at the moment, uh, a basic laptop would be fine. You probably get on no, with no problems. You might just notice uh, a drop in frame rate when you're uh, operating a uh, lot of moving lights at one time. And you may occasionally experience a crash. WYSIWYG, like any program, crashes, especially because it's on Windows, uh, I'm afraid to say. But uh, just make sure you save very often and uh, and control how you um, you build your model. Uh, we're going to talk through that as we go. So hopefully we'll avoid those little foibles that, that tend to create the situation where you might get a crash. So let's get stuck right in. We're going to start off with some basic CAD mode um, systems. So we're just going to look at some, some of the drawing tools we looked at earlier, but in a bit more detail. Look at how to set up a, a blank project from scratch. And then we're going to start importing CAD files and seeing how we can manipulate them. So this is WYSIWYG when it first opens. I haven't really done much apart from just push the toolbars around. You can just drag the uh, the edges here if you want to make it larger or smaller. Personally, I like to have as much space here in the middle as I can, so I'll make everything small. Um, you notice if you've been using Release 42 up to now, or Release 41, uh, we now have this toolbar here, Position Tool, which is very useful. It's something that most 3D applications have. Uh, WYSIWYG's been lacking it so far, so uh, this came out, I think, in Release 43. So uh, you can start to play with this now as well. So the first thing I do when I open up a file like this is, uh, because I'm British and uh, Imperial is just uh, something for 100 years ago to me, I have to get rid of all of this inches and feet stuff. So I just double click down here and we can swap Imperial to metric and back again. So if you're Imperially inclined, then that's where you go down there. You've also got some tools here like double clicking Ortho, which can be quite useful, and double clicking Snap, which also is quite useful. Um, I tend to leave those as they are because I'll actually control those from up here. That's just Snap tools and your author tools here, and you'll see me using these quite a lot as we're working. Second thing I always do is go to my options menu, document options, and in here I go to my draw defaults and make a few changes. So the interval is actually set to a really odd um, distance. This is because it was an imperial, and that probably makes sense if you're working in inches. I'll just change this to 0.5. I find that quite a useful distance to snap to. Um, even though it says grid, it does affect the snap as well. That's because Generally half a meter is enough space for most moving lights, so when you're snapping it's quite handy to think in half meter blocks. Uh, and just generally when you're drawing, if you need to snap to something, half meter is normally about right. You know, I could make that 0 0.1, which would give me a you know, high resolution, I could still snap and get, get rid of the really long decimal places. But generally when I want to use uh, a snap for anything, it's because I'm trying to snap to quite a large um, order of magnitude. And actually, you can change your units up here as well if you wanted to do it that way. For some reason, I have a false habit. I always change it down here first because I just want to get rid of that damn Imperial stuff. So there's nothing else there I'd change right now. Um, we can add in some snap tools. We can change this later, but I might have midpoints and, uh, and grid turned on. So what that means is when I'm snapping, uh, it will snap to the midpoint of a line and the, and the, end of a, uh, and the, the grid. Uh, actually, the points can be quite handy as well because it will snap to the end of the line as well. And endpoints. Here we go. Just get all three of those in. They're all quite useful. But we can get to, we can turn them off later if we don't like them. Click OK. Um, so the first thing I might do actually is just to lay out my stage. You know, we've got absolutely nothing here at the moment. It's a completely blank file, and this is the most daunting part. So I usually like to start with something which just lets me uh, just set some context. So I can't remember the venue size of the Churchill Theatre because it's in my cab plan. So I'll put this in later. Uh, but I know that the pros is about six meters across, so uh, from the center line. So I might bring this across, and as you can see at the moment, uh, I've got my snap turned on. So my units down here are telling me how far across I've come. So I want to try and keep my cursor on zero. You can see over here, I've got zero um, on my on my x-axis. Actually, that's my y-axis because I'm down, and on my x-axis here, I want to come across to about six meters, keeping my y-axis on on green. And I can see the measurements at the bottom there. So I'm going to go for six meters and I'm going to click once and let go. It's really important that you let go because if you click and hold like you do with some CAD programs, uh, you won't actually position that point, it'll just drift away. So now I can move this away and it'd be really easy just to go, oh yeah, six meters, click it, and you end up with a really uh, uneven line. You want it to be dead straight. If you want it to be dead straight, you turn on the X ortho here and then that locks it onto your X. That makes it a lot easier just to place it because you're not thinking so hard about two directions. So I'm moving that around until down here it will say six meters again. There we go. So that's now a 12 meter line. I'm going to right click and go to finish line. 
And as you can see, when I click on that, it gives, does give you keyboard shortcuts as well, which if you're so inclined, you may do. So now you, I start to see actually my my screen's quite large. This is this is a quite a wide stage at the Churchill Theatre. So if I zoom in, suddenly it starts to get a bit more context. So now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go up the other way. So I'm going to find the end. So that's again six meters. I'm looking down here at the bottom. Six meters uh, on the X and zero on the Y. And I want to go up, but oh, I can't because I've still got my ortho turned on. So I can turn this off and go to the Y. And now I can drag it up and down. Now the stage again is about six meters deep. It's quite a bit like an envelope for Churchill Theatre in Bromley. Lovely theatre if you've ever been there. So I'm going to click again. And this time I'm not going to right click and go finish line. I'm going to turn on my other X. So now I've got both turned on, which means I can go up, down, left and right. But it won't let me do any other angles. So it's a 90 degree increment. And I'm going to drag it across until I get perfectly in line with that other line, which you'll see down the bottom happens to be six meters again. And I'm going to complete this line down here. And now I'm going to right click and do finish line. Now there's a difference between closed line, obviously a bought line just turns off the whole thing, cancels the whole thing. Closed line will draw, draw that back together again. So you'll end up with a box, which is useful. And I'll come to that in a second. But finish line is uh, is what you want if you just want to create a line that's, um, that's open-ended. So at the moment I've got two lines here. There's one here. And this line has got three edges, is one complete object. Now if I'd done closed line, that would have created a box. But I can also make a box by clicking on here, use the rectangle tool, uh, go to interactive. If I've got my snap turned on, I can snap it to I've got point snap, midpoint snap, and endpoint snap, but I turned on earlier in my settings. It allows me to snap to the box. If I turn off my grid snap, to turn on my point snap or endpoint end point snap there, you'll see it's snapping to, you see just clicking in like a magnet, clicks to the edge there. So I click on one end, come across, click on the other end, and now that's a box and that's one object. This is really significant when we get into 3D modeling. Um, so I just want to make you aware of it now that there's two different things, but at the moment, I'm quite happy with my, my two lines. It doesn't make a difference to me. Um, I'm just going to do another line down the center because I always like to know my center line. I'm going to come down just by a meter, just so it's really clear. Go all the way up on the Y. Let's go a meter higher. Right click, finish line. And I want to make this a different, um, different look. I don't want it to be quite so solid as that. So I'm going to right click on that properties and I want to assign it a uh, double line there to make it a little bit different. And I'm going to set the spacing of that 0.1. Click apply. If I drag that away. You can see it's made a double line. Click OK. Might not be the best thing but that's, that's now spaced that line either side of centre. It's just a bit more obvious to me that that's the centre while I'm working. Um, we can also change that to a dashed line or we could change it to a different colour. Um, and we can come to that in a second when we when we do layers. But just nice to get started with. Right, so now I've got a basic a basic layout. Um, and we're going to stop there and move on to the next lesson. Uh, where I'm going to start to talk about how we can use the spline tool, which is up here. We're going to start doing something different. Uh, we're actually going to be abandoning this this drawing because I'm going to bring in a CAD file in a minute which is going to replace all of it. But I wanted to show you just how to do these tools um, in, in WYSIWYG if you wanted to do it if you haven't got CAD.